Hey, what's up everyone? How's it going? This is Waj. Hope you guys are all doing well. And here we're going to talk about a system that I've been working on for quite some time now. It's definitely going to be the most powerful gaming PC to date on this channel. It's containing the new Intel Core i7 7700K processor, as well as two, counted two GTX 1080s in SLI configuration. So we're going to basically go through the part selection, the build itself, and then we're going to finally test out this uh, ultimate gaming PC to see how this thing stacks up. So if you're interested in building an ultimate uh, kind of high-end uh, gaming PC, this is a perfect video for you. So let's get right into it. Now, firstly, let's talk about the parts list. Our system is going to be based around the Intel Core i7-7700K processor. This is an unlocked multiplier chip. So that means, depending upon the copy of your chip, it is certainly manageable to achieve a 5 GHz overclock from its 4.2 base clock frequency. So that's exactly what we're doing, but you definitely want to make sure you have some solid cooling performance to back that overclock. We're going to be using Cooler Master's Master Liquid Pro 280. We've actually done a dedicated review on the first version of this series of coolers and basically it features a water block that has a dual chamber design that's not only going to be better in terms of life expectancy by ensuring that the liquid heated up by the CPU is isolated from the sensitive components uh, with the dual chamber pump design. In addition to that, the copper base plate itself has a micro fine plate design so heat dissipation and heat absorption should be optimized and with a combination of the 280 millimeter radiator and the dual 120 millimeter fans from Cooler Master that are ultra high airflow and fairly silent. Uh, we're pretty confident that we can maintain a fairly aggressive overclock for a prolonged period of time with this system. Now, the centerpiece of our gaming PC is going to be this motherboard. This is the Ares Z270X Gaming 7 motherboard from Gigabyte. It basically has all of the latest features that you would want from the Z270 chipset. So you have uh, stuff like a uh, native support for 7 and 6th generation Intel chips. In terms of I.O., you have stuff like USB Type-C integration, killer E2500 gaming and network and gigabit LAN support, multiple connections for U.2 and M.2 SSD PCI Express drives, which we're going to be taking advantage of because we're actually going to be taking two M.2 drives from Kingston and putting them in RAID 0 over here so we could effectively double our read and write performance. So stay tuned for for the benchmark results uh, for all those tests. Now, in terms of the case, we're going to be actually using the Cooler Master Maker 5T. This is a uh, kind of full size slash mid size ATX case that has a fully free form modular system. So you can pretty much customize the way you want to configure your PC uh, with this case in a lot of different ways. Now, you can essentially take off uh, the top portion of the case and uh, modify it, customize your own parts. There's also a whole bunch of different custom parts that you can purchase from Cooler Master's site to kind of enhance the airflow and whatever kind of a liquid cooling solution that you're going to go with. Uh, in addition to that, the inside of the case is again uh, completely up to you in terms of way you want to structure it. So since I'm not going to be using uh, really any hard drives or SSDs apart that's going to be installed in the motherboard itself, I'm going to keep everything really nicely cleanly laid out. There's also some support rails for our multiple GPUs uh, solution. So that's going to be really good when I'm transporting this case then it has that big nice handle at the top in addition to all that you also have an LED light strip that uh, will illuminate in a couple of different ways including just a standard static illumination as well as pulse mode and everything like that and there's even a fan controller where you can hook up multiple different fans and you have a high and low uh, button for that now in terms of memory we're going to be using Corsair Vengeance LPX memory it's our favorite uh, great value for the overall DDR4 grade that you're going to get. We're not going with super high uh, performance memory, uh, 2400 megahertz, but we are having uh, 32 gigs of it, which should be plenty uh, for this system over here. Moving on to the power supply itself, since we're going to be running multiple GPUs with a fairly aggressive overclock, we're definitely going to need uh, some power over here and some clean power at that. And I think for the best bang for the dollar, you definitely want to check out the EVGA Supernova G2000 watt PSU. This is a fully modular unit 
unit that has 80 plus gold certification. So you're going to get some really nice clean power for all of your uh, components over here, which is going to be crucial to make this a successful build. Now, in terms of the GPUs, we're going to be using a Gigabyte GTX 1080s. This is the turbo overclocked edition. Essentially, these have a blower fan design similar to the reference card and a fairly good overall cooling performance with relatively uh, low noise levels, which is going to be good because we are going to be pushing these cards to just over 2000 megahertz in our overclock settings. And uh, since we're going to be using two of them, we are going to need a high bandwidth SLI bridge, which is required for the new Pascal architecture. And luckily we have this gigabyte high bandwidth bridge over here, which is going to match perfectly with our gigabyte GPUs. Now to summate everything up, our total hardware cost is around uh, 2,838 and 79 cents. Obviously this is going to fluctuate depending upon where you are in the world and when you're purchasing these components, but this is the specific cost for just the hardware itself. Obviously there's going to be other cost factors on top of that, such as accessories, monitors, and obviously the operating system. Now with that portion of the video completed, let's actually get into our build montage. If you're unfamiliar with how to build a PC, I'll have a link in the description down below for a more step-by-step -step process. But these days it's super simple to get started. Everything is pretty much plug and play. And even though every build is going to be a little bit different depending upon the components, generally speaking, a PC building is a really a kind of a mundane task that's really attainable for pretty much everybody out there. So with that said, let's build this thing. with the build all completed as you can see everything went really smoothly nothing to really to report or complain about let's actually get into our post setup process for me personally after i installed the os i immediately started to overclock our uh, cpu and i've actually overclocked this cpu before so i know the specific settings that works for it so for me i set the base clock to around 100 megahertz the uh, ratio for the cpu clock was set to 50 to achieve a 5 gigahertz overclock and the voltage which is the most important important thing. I actually lucked out with having a very efficient uh, chip. So I really need to only go to 3.75 volts. You might have to go uh, beyond and obviously the higher the voltage, the better cooling performance you're going to get, or you're going to get diminished returns. And obviously if you don't have the voltage high enough, you're going to deal with some stability issues. So you always want to find that balance specific for your chip. And in terms of the RAID system, we're using the easy RAID uh, system built into the Gigabyte motherboards for our 
RAID 0 configuration for our M.2 drive. So that's really easy to configure. Uh, basically, just like any other uh, RAID configuration, you go into the menu, you select the two drives that you want to uh, RAID up, and we're going to select obviously a RAID 0 configuration to get uh, both drives to work uh, in unison together, hopefully doubling our read and write performance, which we'll see. In terms of our graphics card uh, setup, uh, basically, uh, you just plug and play all your components into the PCI Express connectors, uh, hook up your SLI high bandwidth bridge. Uh, you want to enable a maximize 3D performance to enable the SLI. Uh, so therefore, you can basically plug your monitor into one of the GPUs and both uh, GPUs uh, should be enabled uh, for 3D hardware acceleration. And in terms of our overclock, we're going to set both GPUs to uh, 2029 MHz and the memory clock is going to be around 11,000 MHz. Hertz. And with all that done, uh, the overall power consumption of this system, if you're actually curious at idle, it only consumes about 71 watts, which is still fairly good uh, since we have everything pretty much running at optimal overclock settings. Now, the first thing that we're going to get into in terms of our benchmark results is our CPU performance. And I'm going to show you the performance of uh, the overclock setting uh, versus the stock configuration. So at stock configuration, Cinebench R15 our uh, score is around uh, 1018 and at overclock to around 5 gigahertz you're looking at 1104 so fairly nice little bump up there from the stock configuration now moving on in terms of our read and write a uh, sequential performance from our m.2 uh, drives in raid 0 configuration using crystal disk mark we get sequential read speeds of over 2.5 uh, gigabytes a second and uh, 1.6 uh, gigabytes a second in terms of write speed now by contrast a single kingston hyper x m.2 drive will give you uh, read speeds around 1.4 gigabytes a second and write speeds around 800 megabytes a second so that's definitely a pretty huge difference not effectively double but uh, certainly close so uh, definitely worth it to go raid zero on your m.2 drives now last but not least uh, let's talk about the gaming benchmark results obviously this is a gaming machine so how does it fare up well 3d mark time spy we have the results over here uh, both in a single card uh, configuration and in SLI mode and as you can see we're getting over 13,000 points uh, and around uh, 7,800 points on a single card so definitely you can see that with applications and games that are enabled for multi GPU support with our uh, dual GTX 1080s we're getting uh, some solid overall performance and again we are overclocked on both GPUs to around 2000 megahertz so this is slightly better than stock configuration. Now we're going to move on to actual some real world uh, gaming benchmark results and you're going to see the same comparison where you're going to see the average frames per second both in SLI mode and in single card mode so that way you can determine the difference between one card versus two cards running in SLI. So let's get right into it. guys and that's really it as you can see from the side-by-side -side comparison when it comes to the gaming aspect of things SLI is uh, definitely going to give you significant increases in terms of 4k gaming performance but if you're not specifically uh, wanting to get the most possible frames per second in that higher resolution uh, a single GTX 1080 is more than capable enough to do so and you can certainly save a couple of more dollars now if you are interested in a uh, gaming PC that costs about half as much as this uh, definitely check out our 7600k build featuring the GTX uh, 1070 for those of you on that uh, kind of want to spend a little bit of money but don't want to go all out like this PC I definitely want to give a big thanks to Cooler Master and Gigabyte for supplying some of the crucial parts and components uh, for this PC without them that wouldn't be possible check out the description down below for all the detailed links about everything we talked about and either than thank you so much for your support 
Thank you for watching and we'll see you later. Take care.